Welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, this, of course, I don't understand why I have forgotten to do this, but this clearly is one of the most important parts of a factory. Anyways, um, I have installed two mods to the game. Um, one of them being the set time, or rather the always day mod, where I can change the time as I myself please, um, because I figured that it is actually quite annoying when it turns into night. Although it is quite useful when hunting slugs, so I can do it as I uh, feel proper to change the time when I want to go hunt slugs. But for the uh, purposes of recording, uh, having the um, day change into night, even though the night lasts quite a bit shorter than the daytime, it is rather annoying because it gets really dark in some places. The other mod that I installed is the um, utility signs mod. You get these uh, nifty little signs. I don't know what... Yep, there you go. Get a small sign. Uh, you can also get a, a tall sign. Uh, I haven't tested it at all yet, but this is the first time I'm placing them down. I don't know if it shows... No, it doesn't show from the other side. But you can then configure it and you can choose what text size and you can say uh, Caledon. Caledon was here. Sounds perfect. Save and exit. Yeah. yeah so Caledon was there. And go back to digital. Yeah. So this, there are other ways to do things. But the reason why I wanted the utility designs is for the... Um, the containers that is the most important part but one thing that i've seen that people do is they build a small belt just like that come on game why do you do this like so so you can just see what's in the container like that but i'm not a big fan of that idea would much rather just have a chiller design like that and not configure the storage container would configure the utility sign and then Caterium wire and save and exit and there we go. I know that they plan on adding signs to the game, which is why I don't feel that using that mod is game breakingly different. This is just going to help me uh, keep track of certain things in the game. Uh, easier. So, in terms of what I've been doing in between episodes, um, not that much really, but there is something that is rather uh, major that needs to be uh, addressed. Because of the specific point of the game we're in right now, we need uh, many, many items. One of the items that we do need is of course the plastic and the rubber, which we already fixed. But I went out into the desert and upgraded the coal mine, uh, one of them, to a Mark II coal mine. So you can see there's a Mark III belt going with coal, and the other one is now veering off here. That's one Mark III belt is more than sufficient to power up all of our 16 coal generators. So I happened to notice that we had a sulfur mine just behind the base. So, there's a sulfur mine down there. It's even a pure one. Now, of course, we have a crooked belt here, but that's the usual thing when it comes to mines, because they are usually not aligned to the grid, so... Uh, you should fix that, Coffee Stain Studios. You should really fix that. It's an important thing. I have four machines here making black powder, and we need black powder for uh, research purposes, but also for other purposes like uh, nobelisks and uh, rifle cartridges and stuff like that. Uh, but the other reason why I'm veering off the coal and having the sulfur is that we also need to get more, um, or rather not more, we need to get the... Um, the uh, compacted coal. This is a recipe we need for certain things. Not yet, but soon enough. I don't think I'm going to use this 
Well, I might actually use this, build it over the to the other side, and I might use this as a small outpost thing for uh, for this purpose. That is coal and sulfur products. But I would have to upgrade the coal mine up out there. Not that we're using very much of it because black powder doesn't take a lot. I mean, we're having a 240 sulfur coming in there, and uh, we're using 60 of it, and we're using a whole whooping 30 coal for all of these four facilities here. Now, we also need to go back to the base and we need to go to the um, hub and uh, send off some research. That is important. And we can also to go research the black powder in the man. I'm afraid I don't have a specific plan for this episode. Um, so we'll just have to wing it as we go. Um, but that should be fine. First of all, let's research the um, black powder, or rather volatile applications. That's a quick three seconds. And that gives us access to Nobelisk Explosives and Nobelisk Detonator. That's something that I want to take fairly quickly. Uh, the rifle, it's nice, but as you can see, it has uh, some rather steep research costs there, and we're nowhere even near that. And the rifle cartridges too, well, we could research them, but we don't really need them, because we need the rifle first and foremost. Also, to produce the rifle cartridges, we are going to need to use manufacturers, and they do require a uh, rather lot of resources. But we'll do uh, the Nobelisk explosives research. Which gives us access to inflated pocket dimension, which is a, another uh, five inventory slots. First of all, let's get the Nobelisk detonator. We need five object scanners for that. That is a bizarre research cost. Uh, object scanner requires... So we need 15 beacons and 250 screws. Guess we can accommodate that. That's 15 beacons and the screws should be uh, behind here. Let's grab a stack of those. And back to this and now over the scanner we can make five of them. I, I really don't use the object scanner all that much. Not a big fan. I feel it um, bugs more often than uh, than it's actually helpful. We should get this one as well, frequency mapping, so we can get the map, but um, not a high priority. Let's do the Nobelisk detonator. That's going to take us three minutes, so... In the hub, we are going to take the industrial manufacturing milestone, which gives us access to the manufacturer, and also the computer and the truck, which is good for building outposts. It has a double-sized trunk, I believe. We also get the modular engine and the adaptive control unit, which is necessary for the next space elevator phase. Um, we have all we need for this. Uh, I do have a couple of these things stashed in here already, so let's grab those things that we need. And the motors. Can put these in. Then I need to go get cable. Let's see how much we have. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So we need a thousand cable. I think we have that in the container that's left over from the old. Uh, stuff. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Yeah, almost. Remove this. And we can take a stack from here as well. I'll just take two stacks because uh, I like having 200 cable with me at all times. And we can take the hypertube back. Let's do that. And I'll show off the other hypertubes afterwards.
here and da, 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 da. just get them in there and there we're ready and launch the pot Milestone sorry reached. the manufacturer increases production complexity a critical look at production line logistics and efficiency is recommended during integration the truck allows for increased efficiency in transportation, automated or otherwise. New project parts enable progress to the next phase. Yeah, while it's nice that we are going to be able to get to the next phase, that's not something that's going to happen anytime soon, that I can say. Uh, I don't recall wrongly, those uh, parts are rather complicated to build. Yeah, we need to get the heavy modular frames, which ironically needs to be built in a manufacturer, so we have to handcraft uh, a couple of these. Um, as you can see, we can't even make those uh, parts in the assembler, so they are for the uh, manufacturer. As for the other milestones after this, uh, I still haven't taken jump pads. Um, we have the alternative fluid transport, which definitely is something that is going to be useful, but I'm not about to handcraft 25 of these just to get these, because we don't need these yet. The gas mask, that would be very useful, but it requires fabric. And as far as I know, we only have one recipe for fabric, which requires mycelia, and getting mycelia is kind of a pain when we are here. In tier 6, we have the expanded power infrastructure. That gives us access to the conveyor belt Mark IV. I don't remember exactly what is necessary to build the, the conveyor belt Mark IV, but I, I have a sneaking suspicion that it's the encased industrial beams. Not sure, but... Um, I remember the Mark V belt is the um, aluminium uh, alclad sheets. I'm not, no, not sure about the Mark IVs. Uh, and then you get the scanner update for Caterium more. And but the fuel generator, that would be nice though. You could get the jetpack. Uh, getting the jetpack would not be so useful for the jetpack, but the inventory slots would definitely be useful. And of course, we have the monorail train technology, which is something that I definitely want. But uh, to build the monorail, we need. Uh, I don't remember exactly what's necessary to build the railways and stuff like that, but. I, I definitely think it's steel beams and steel pipes. But for the next tier, I think that we will have the gas mask as the next tier. So we'll just set that as the active milestone. Uh, you should be done. Now we can make an obelisk detonator, which is going to be helpful. And let's see, expanded tool belt, giving us one extra hand slot. That would be useful. Why did I do that? But I think we'll take the inventory slots first. And yeah, there we go. Uh, I can put the uh, gunpowder in here. I don't need to bring that about. Uh, let's go back there. So I've built two more hypertubes. I have this uh, very short one here, which goes, just goes down here. And that probably must be painful, but I'm taking damage. This is one of the uh, small concrete outposts that I have, which is occasionally useful. But I should get this to a more central location. This is a hypertube that probably will disappear after a while. And then we have the other hypertube, which is far more scenic. I like this uh, hypertube up here, it's quite nice to uh, to travel along. When you uh, upgrade a belt and then upgrade the uh, miner to a Mark II miner, do take care to make sure that you actually uh, connect the power, because uh, I forgot to do that, which uh, was interesting. Thankfully a miner Mark II is... Uh, doesn't use more power than what you can get from a regular biomass generator. But I had to stand out at the miner after I discovered that my power network was off. 
and wait for the miner to mine a fair amount of coal before I could go back to, um, to doing things. So here we have plastic in one container and we have rubber in the other container. Uh, I don't think we need any of that right now, but I'll bring with us um, what we need for the gas mask milestone. And then we can uh, take the hypertube back. I did some minor uh, adjustments to the uh, refinery in terms of putting up the walkways that I had forgotten to put down. Other than that, it looks exactly the same as it did uh, at the end of the last episode. Well, with the exception of the containers that I just uh, picked up things from. So not having to drive the car out at the outpost there, that is definitely going to be helpful. Take this one and go back to the hub. We can just put these in right away. No, we can't. I'll have to put them in here for now. Sort these. This one is done. We get uh, five more inventory slots. Good. And then we want to have the extra hand slot. We need uh, one, one of these. And we can take that as well. Please, game. Thank you. Okay, now let's do a summary of where we are. We have the basic plastic and rubber production that we need. Fabric, I believe, requires mycelium. Oh, it's not even made in this one. It's actually made in an assembler, really. Well, I don't know where it's made. We don't have the recipe for it yet, it would seem. I guess it's under the mycelia tree in the mam. Yes, it is. Well, I guess we can go get that too then. Um, can jump down here, uh, continue here. Should have plenty of biomass available in the little um, biomass uh, production facility that I made over here. I can't even remember if I showed you guys this. I built a little compact loot thing here where I've used the color gun. Brown for wood, yellow, no, yellow, green for leaves. And they just go very compactly into each of their respective uh, constructors, which then goes to this merger here and goes into the constructor there which is making solid biofuel and then stashes it into that container so i believe we need uh one stack of uh the biomass yeah can we get 200 of it yes we can there we go and we just need to run back up I think we have mycelia in one of the chests up there, so... This is one of the points of the game where I personally feel a bit confused. What do I do now? Um, so this is a critical point where you need to, to look carefully at the things that you are uh, capable of building. Uh, you need to look carefully at what are your current goals, what do you want to do, and figure out where to go from here. What I will do first and foremost in this uh, episode is take a quick look at what we have in our base. Down here we have the smelters. Uh, we have four smelters here. And we have 12 smelters here. So these 16 smelters are smelting down copper ore into copper ingots. 
And then the copper ingots come out at the other side and they're taken up on two belts over there. Um, and at the other side here, we have eight smelters here. And there should be 16 smelters in this array. And these smelters are smelting down iron ore into iron ingots. And those ingots are then transported up via the elevators there. At the end over here, we have the uh, smelters there. There should be eight of them. Those are smelting down iron ore into iron ingots. It's actually 16 of them. And we also have coal coming in from outside of the base, from a far, far away distance, into these 12 foundries, which are then smelting down steel, filling up three belts of those, and taking it up here via these lifts. Over there we have concrete. Uh, so we have limestone being funneled in from two nodes into these six uh, constructors where one of them is set to run at 40%, I believe. Yeah, 34%. And that's taken up into the lift here to the second floor. And someone asked me how I organize my base. And I think that is a very uh, fair question. I like to have the smelting areas separated from the base itself. And normally I wouldn't have the smelters below other foundations. But since the height here is what it is, it is not a problem. The reason for that is the smoke from the smelters. It looks very silly if you have smoke coming up through the foundations. So if you want to have the smelters below your base, make sure that you have enough height. If you're bothered by the smoke, that is so that the smoke doesn't come through the foundations at the top floor. So the next way that I organize my base after uh, having a smelting area is what's the simplest way to transport the ingots needed to its respective machines? Which is why you will find that I have two of these Mark III belts going into this array. And this array is the array responsible for making iron plates. And as you can see, I have a substantial amount of those constructor constructors making those. There should be two, four, six, eight, sixteen of these making iron plates. Some of them, that would be the four over there are dedicated to only put iron plates into this storage container because iron plates is such an important resource that you always want to have them on hand. You, you don't want to be in a situation where you have to wait for iron plates. Um, yes, you could, but I don't want to be in that situation at least. Then I have one belt going off to uh, this area where I have eight no, six machines making casted iron screws uh, or casted screws. Um, this belt is not at all fully utilized, so I can set up more machines on this belt because we're using six times 12.5 ingots, which is not at all anywhere near the capacity of what we're coming, what we're having coming in on this belt, which is 240 ingots. So this is the iron area of the base. Then we have the copper area of the base, where I have these two lifts here. And this is a little bit more complicated. Um, because, first of all, of course, we have the wire. Wire is a very important basic resource. And then we have the belt crisscrossing over there. And that's taking the wire from one side or rather one of the constructors, and moving it up, and then joining it together with the machines that are here. And since each machine is creating 30 parts per minute, I believe that we would be at 60, 120, uh, 240, and then 270, which is the maximum capacity of one belt. So these bring the wire uh, not into a container, but just directly onto this uh, belt here. And we'll move on to that afterwards. 
Uh, then the other eight machines, or is it seven machines? Two, six, two, four, six, yeah. The other seven machines that are producing wire is taking it to this container here so that I have a small buffer of them. And at the same time, I need a bit more of the wire, so that's going that way, uh, than what is going out on the 270 belt there. The other copper belt is going above here and going down here. And here I have four machines that are producing wires that are on each side producing um, enough wire to power up one machine each making cable. And the cable I just funnel into that container over there. And since we're no longer using it, we, we you dig. You do need the cable for one of the space elevator parts and I suspect we're going to need to have to connect this up again when we get to that part of the uh, base expansion. But for now, I'm just... Cable is such an important resource that you need a lot of it, so... And the rest of the belt uh, with copper ingots go to these uh, six machines here that are producing the copper sheets that we need to produce pipes. And again, this is a resource that we're not using for anything currently, so it's just uh, for our own production of sheets so that we can make pipes and hypertubes. Then we get to this part of the facility. Here we have machines that require iron plates and wire so that we can make the stitched iron plates. And the iron plates come in on the belt up here. So those are taken from the iron plate area and they come in here and we also have screws which move on to uh, the next uh, assembly array and we have currently eight no four machines making the stitched iron plates so we get like uh, 22.2 no 22.4 iron plates per minute reinforced iron plates that is and those are brought to this container and there is an excess uh, we are using some of these so the excess is left in here and then the rest is transported out again and let's follow that first because that goes to these two machines that are making baby bolt cubes or uh, bolted frames as the game likes to call them rather well, modular frames would be the actual name of them and that's where the screws go to from the uh, topmost belt there. And since we don't really need many modular frames, I have reserved an area so that I can build more of these. Uh, and that pertains to the uh, point where we are going to need modular frames. But I can also build them at the other side, uh, so I can build them back to back. That will make a little um, uh, dent in my uh, road system. But the road system isn't really that important to me. I mean, I don't need to have one long distance or whatever. I'm not using like... A, in Factory we have the city block design system. I'm not using a system like that in my factories at all. Uh, it is definitely feasible if you want to do a system like that, but it's not necessary uh, in my opinion. Uh, when I build my factories, I build them based on utility, uh, what is most efficient in terms of utility, what is simplest to do for me, and I'm not afraid at all to tear things, tear th things down again if I discover that, oh, this is not enough room, I'm going to need more of the baby ball cubes for whatever project I'm doing. I can always move this somewhere else. Was having the ability to do copy paste would have been a great boon in that term but it's not really that much of a hassle for me uh, the other part of the factory where we need wire is for the rotor and stator array so we have steel pipes and wire being used in the stator assembly and we have four machines making stators which means we get 20 stators per minute and we have four machines making the steel rotors, which is an alternate recipe, which I prefer vastly over the default recipe for rotors, since it also gives us five parts per minute, which means I can have four of these and four of the other, and it, both of them are using steel pipes and wire, so it's just so much easier to set it up that way instead of having to use the default rotor recipe, 
which is iron rods and screws and you get four parts per minute so you would need five of these to four stator uh, assemblers. So that's where the rest of the wire goes to. Now the rotors and stators is being brought out of here on the topmost and the bottommost of those belts while the steel uh, pipes go in on the middle here. And I take these over to these two machines over here that are producing motors. I haven't built a container for these yet, but we should do that. And I think that having two machines making motors is sufficient currently. The steel pipes uh, comes from over there, but we'll get back to that. Because first of all, we have the concrete coming up here into this container so that I can easily pick them up. I think I want to upgrade this container to an industrial storage container instead of the uh, regular storage container. And then they go over there and that will also revisit. I tend to use these uh, regular conveyor poles to make sure that I have at least two foundations of room between each of the assembly lines so that I have some kind of road system, which makes it easier for me to walk in between. So the steel comes up here into this rather complicated system that I have here. And this, as some of you might remember when I built this, this was a kind of a challenge to build in terms of mathematics and so forth because one of the belts is simple enough. It takes a full Mark III belt and it brings it over to this array. And this array is literally four machines that are currently making steel beams. And they take 60 ingots each to make 15 beams. So I get 60 beams out of this array, uh, which are then put into this container. And that container goes over to here, where it's also joined up by the concrete to have these two machines that I have encased industrial beams in. I want to replace this uh, system here, where I would remove two of these machines and I can use steel pipes instead of beams to make encased industrial beams. I don't remember the name of that alternate recipe, but we're going to get around to that. Then finally, um, I had to split one of the belts into two Mark II belts. So 120 of the steel ingots are going over to this array, which consists of 12 constructors making iron rods, but out of steel. So these make a lot more steel uh, or iron rods out of the steel. You see 48 parts per minute. I haven't even bothered to do anything with this side yet. I think I'm taking them to a container, but just leaving them there. And the same on the other side, because I don't use the, uh, the rods currently. So I might remove half of this array unless I get some recipe where I need them, because I'm, I'm overproducing them by far. Then we have this array, which uses a full belt of 240 plus uh, a belt of 120 to produce uh, the steel pipes. And each of these require 30 per minute, so I have four of them connected to the Mark II belt. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them connected to the Mark III belt. So, And here I'm using one of the industrial storage containers. I have the uh, lift going out there, which is for the um, rotor and stator assembly over there. But I'm, I've left this uh, opening on purpose because I know that we're going to need the, uh, the um, pipes for another, uh, at least one more uh, assembly array. My brain isn't functioning up to speed these days, as you may have noticed. I do apologize for that. There's a lot of stuff going on in my life currently, and I will post a blog about that. Up there, we have the Caterium node. I haven't bothered upgrading it to a Mark II miner yet, uh, because I we have one smelter smelting that down to Caterium ingots and we have one constructor making Caterium wire and we have one container which is full of Caterium wire. It's not an exactly a, a high demand product that I have in the base currently. So I haven't bothered to expand this, nor do I 
uh, want to have it here. So eventually I will move this because uh, there isn't room for a full um, assembly line here. And that's about what I have in the base currently. Uh, so I think I gave a, a good um, look at what we're doing in the main base here, how I do things. Uh, of course, if you have any further questions about it, uh, I would be honored to uh, answer them. So do uh, feel free to comment either here or in the Discord server if you... Uh, want to know more about the uh, the logic uh, or lack of thus <laughs> depending on your view on it um, then we have the refineries of course I already went through them to the best of my ability I think in the uh, previous episodes I don't think we want to spend too much time on them there are a few things that I want to do out here um, I need to extend the foundation area quite a bit. Um, I'm wondering if I should change these into uh, glass foundations, but then again, if I do, we lose these uh, accents that I've made where we can see the pipelines going underneath. And I really like this accent stuff with the corners of the half pipe, no, the quarter pipes and so forth. So I think that I won't replace them because we're going to have these glass... Um, foundations going on uh, with these accented, uh, what should we call them, underpass ways where the pipes, pipelines are going to run. So yeah, one thing that is definitely necessary that I know is necessary is that we need to uh, take a trip into the wild and do an exploration episode because I need more hard drives so I will uh, have a look at the um, satisfactorycalculator.com map and see what hard drives I haven't picked up yet and see what hard drives we can take now and we'll do an exploration episode so that we can um, get more alternate recipes. Also would be useful to pick up some of those uh, tactical bore cubes aka heavy modular frames so that I don't have to handcraft them because I know that several of the wrecks usually have those lying around. We have a few already lying in the uh, hub but uh, if I don't have to handcraft them I will be very pleased about that. So uh, I did print out some more tickets from the sink. Uh, currently we're not gaining anyone because the uh, plastic and rubber production has stopped which means that, that also the petroleum coke production has stopped. And as I mentioned in the previous episode that's why I didn't bother to set up uh, any kind of power plant based on that because it is very very unreliable power wise we're doing very well we have a capacity of 1200 megawatts we're using less than 200 um, so that's not an issue currently uh, we can put in these things now you see we have 16 of the uh, tactical ball cubes hanging around and we have 12 of the tickets the coupons if we put in these, we need to get the fabric. That was also one of the things that I wanted to get. Now we have an additional hand slot, so I can put this into my hand instead of having it in my inventory. Mycelia fabric, we require 25 mycelia and 100 biomass, so we'll do that. I think there's another fabric recipe in the oil tree. Uh, you can get fabric from, uh, I think it's plastic. I don't remember. Parachute, nah, don't need that currently. What else do we have? Caterium, we can get the AI limiters. Oh, we can actually get that right away. It's important to, Im to limit the uh, color drawing. And that leads to the smart splitters and the high-speed connectors we could get this but uh, then i would have to go out and get more plastic also the power pole mark three i don't remember what those require to build but i think they have 11 connections 10 or 11 connections maybe even 12 i don't remember flower petals we're done with that alien organisms we have a couple more things we can get here 
this one, we probably should unlock that one actually. Because we have so many of the alien organs. We would need more mycelia, but uh, alien organs, we have plenty of those. Let's let's do that. You don't have to go that far to get the uh, the cubes. They are here, so... Take a couple of those. And we need alien organs. here and start the research for that we can put these back in this chest and these we can put back in here and then we just have to wait for this to finish another milestone that I definitely know that we want to take is the um, this one but we need more of the modular heavy modular frames and we need the computers for this but getting the mark 4 conveyor belts would be very useful uh, quickly uh, making computers huh, i i am not a fan of making computers with the manufacturers so that is one of the reasons why i want to go out into the wilderness to find the uh Orton recipes one of the things that we definitely want to set up is manufacture... Oh, we need plastic and motors. Well, we can pick up the motors and we can set up the manufacture out at the refinery outpost. We are nearing the end of this episode, so... Pick up that. I think that should be sufficient. Yep. So we need to get some plastic. So. What I meant by this phase of the game being a bit more difficult uh, and a bit confusing to me is because there are so many things that needs to be done now and many of those things require the manufacturer so it's kind of like you have to go handcraft a lot of the uh, heavy modular frames to get a couple of manufacturers up and of course the best thing to do first would be to get the manufacturers to make the heavy, heavy modular frames up so that you can have those uh, being built automatically in your production chain so that you don't have to do the handcrafting. So I think that that is the first product that we want to, uh, to, uh, to do the handcrafting of, uh, to be honest. So the manufacturer is big, very big. It has four inputs but it also can produce products that have three uh, requirements. So in here we have the option to create beacons. And yes, I do want to automate the beacons, um, but not yet. We have the heavy modular frame. And as you can see, the heavy modular frame requires 10 of the normal modular frames per minute. They require 30 steel pipes per minute. They require 10 encased industrial beams per minute. And they require 200 screws per minute. So these are expensive to make. But they are absolutely necessary. Then we have the crystal oscillators. That is one of the things that I want to automate. Uh, we do have the necessary materials for this. We have enough quartz crystals. We have enough cable. Or rather, I might have to set up additional cable factories now that I or assemblies now that I look at this. Uh, we do have enough reinforced iron plates. We might have to set up a few more of these, but I want to set up five of these. So yeah. Then of course we have the computers. These require circuit boards. Uh, circuit boards require plastic in abundance, so that's not something that we're going to do quickly. But there is an alternate recipe four computers that I want to find, which is the crystal computer. Now the crystal computer, you can actually make those in the regular assemblers instead of the manufacturer. It is not a very efficient resource or recipe. And the reason for that is the crystal oscillators, one per minute, they take a long time to produce. As you can also see, the manufacturer requires 55 megawatts of power. So if you have five of these up making crystal oscillators, 
that is a whooping uh, 275 megawatts of power to only these five. So we might have to expand our power grid uh, or power production capacity uh, because we also need to be making the heavy modular frames and the computers. And then, of course, we get to the part of the space elevator parts. The modular engine requires motors and rubber, and it also requires the smart plating from the previous space elevator phase. And then we have the adaptive control units, which requires the automated wiring from the previous space elevator phase, in addition to 10 circuit boards, or 5 per minute, heavy modular frames, 1 per minute, and 1 computer per minute. So. Yeah, it's going to be a bit uh, rough getting here. And I can easily understand why uh, this is one of the phases of the game where people just go, oh my god, this is just too much. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. And I suspect that even more so than the refineries, this is a phase of the game where people drop out because things are getting so complicated that... It is really hard to to uh, get an overview of where do I begin, what do I do, I have so many options, I need to handcraft things, and so forth. But, the important thing is, heavy modular frames is priority number one. Because with heavy modular frames being automated, you can produce more manufacturers without having to handcraft the heavy modular frame. So that is the priority number one. Get up one manufacturer that is making heavy modular frames. After that, the next priority would be to get up a manufacturer making computers. The crystal oscillators, those are an additional recipe that you get from the MAM research. This is not a core resource. It is rather an additional resource. Uh, it is a useful resource for certain things, but these are the ones that are necessary. So when you get to this phase, prioritize the heavy modular frame and then the computers. And then when you have those automated, if you go back to the uh, to the uh, hub, you'll see what I mean. Because in the milestones, we have the uh, alternative fluid transport requires heavy modular frames. We have, in tier 6, we have the expanded power infrastructure, requires heavy modular frames and computers. We have the jetpack, requires computers. We have the monorails, requires computers and heavy modular frames. You see, these are the core products that you need to continue with your factory. Both in terms of what you need to build, but also in terms of what you need to uh, put uh, into the um, uh, hub to unlock more of the technologies that you need. The last thing you should consider, and when I say the last thing you should consider, I really mean the last thing, because you need to have a substantial uh, construction and production network before you start making these. You should have everything up and running. You should be happily and contently uh, moving about in regards to... Um, having these produced and the other things that you want to have produced before you even consider doing the modular engines and the adaptive control units. Because circuit boards, computers, automated wiring, uh, smart plating, motors, these require an awful lot of resources that you need to have planned out before you build them. So again, start with the two basic resources that you need the uh, uh, the manufacturer for. They have the heavy modular frames first and then the computer. And I, as I've said earlier in the uh, in the series, I will show you how to build the regular assembly line for the computer before we go into the alternate recipe that I want to go find, the crystal computer. So the next episode will be an exploration episode. If I do find the uh, the uh, crystal computer as a result of that, that's fine. But I will not build the crystal computers until after I've built one manufacturer making the computers with a basic normal game recipe. Just so you guys can see how this works. But note, 
we are with a basic refinery producing 60 plastic currently. Now we could of course expand that, but one of these requires 45 plastic per minute. And it also requires 25 circuit boards. And those circuit boards are going to be an issue currently with our basic refinery because the circuit boards require 30 plastic per minute. So 30 plus 45 is 75, which is 15 more than what we are producing currently. So, yeah. I think that's about it for this episode. If you have any questions or comments, do please feel free to leave them in the comment section. Uh, and as always, you are also very welcome to join us in our Discord server. You will find the link to that in the description of this video. And for now, thank you all so very much for joining me. And I will be seeing you all in the next episode.